Hey guys, Moan Pobert here and in today's video I'm going to show you how to save at least half a million dollars, five hundred thousand dollars at least in your next business acquisitions if you are looking to buy businesses of course. So let's get to it. Now remember this channel is all about how to buy businesses, grow businesses, how to buy them if you don't have much credit or much capital or even experience in that sector because we are going to make sure that we find someone else to operate the day to day for us. Uh, that's how we can do whatever you want with your day or just do what I'm trying to do which is to build a portfolio of businesses. Um, I find it the most fun thing to do out there. Literally I think it's better than vacation. I've been literally anywhere in the world that I wanted um, in pretty much any nice beach drink any nice cocktail that I can um, and this is for me the, like, this is the thing this is the best thing out there this helps me feel so fulfilled about my day to day and I, I want you to get involved as well if you can so subscribe to this channel like this video help me grow the channel share it with your friends a comment below um, or, or yeah, comment below what you think and even more important see in the description below I created a survey where I, you basically put your details and let me know what's your biggest question when it comes to buying businesses and growing businesses and literally I'll create a personalized video for you because as you can see I'm trying to post literally daily videos so it's hard for me to come up with ideas so see the description below, fill the survey, let me know what's your biggest question and some of you guys um, we're gonna potentially give you one-on-one -on -one free mentorship on how to buy businesses so you have chances to win if you feel that service so go and do that right now and also if you didn't yet join our free business buying mastermind it's a facebook group um, it's free and it's basically me posting more unique content and you can be involved with a great community that we're trying to build with people who are looking to buy businesses so definitely join in the description below if you didn't yet so to begin with, when I talk about saving at least half a million dollars in your acquisition, obviously I'm assuming you're talking to business owners, you're putting yourself out there, you're trying different origination methods to find motivated sellers, um, you're talking to business owners, you're receiving financials, obviously you sign an NDA to, to build a rapport and make sure everything is, is legit and, and you're just following the, the process of buying a business. And then I'm assuming you're kind of at this stage or at least thinking about this stage um, so you'll know what to do next when that happens. Now if you watch some of my other videos you know that the simple way to value business is by multiples of EBITDA and how you determine how much you need to make an offer on your business. See some of my other videos or in general go and look for other acquisitions in your industry and based on that determine kind of like what's your ideal price for the business that you want to own. So let's start the process on how to save money in your acquisition. To begin with, when you're talking to a business owner and you're getting financials, you'll see that everyone got literally a different EBITDA or pre-tax profit numbers based on what they think is the ideal number, based on what they think that they're basically the profit of their business is. Now I'll show you what, I'm, what I mean by that because there are many addbacks to that number that shouldn't be there when you're trying to buy a business and, and I'll dive into that. So yeah, when you're trying to buy a business, you want to make sure that the EBITDA number you're working with is accurate. Uh, accurate, yeah, whatever the word is. Yeah, but you got me, right? You want to make sure that the number is right and you don't have, uh, I guess, things like personal expenses involved in that number. And it's really important to find out those things because the higher the EBITDA you're going to work with, the more you're going to pay about on that business, right? And in the end of the day, we're not looking to pay premium for businesses, right? So that's why we have to work with the right numbers. Unless you're a, a, a trade buyer or just have money to throw. And even if you have money to throw, you want to throw that money in a smart way, right? So make sure you're working with the right numbers. So remember to remove things like personal expenses and even any expenses. Many times sellers make their expenses look different and you don't want to make this part of the EBITDA that you're working with. So for example, many times a seller will add his salary into the EBITDA. Now you don't want to pay him uh, basically that number because you need to have a general manager after it as well. So the only time I will put that into the EBITDA or include it is if it's only the difference between his number assuming that it's above a, a normal market value for that for that uh, uh, position and I'll put that in a difference versus what I will need to pay for a general manager to run the day-to-day -day for us. You also want to make sure that one-time expenses or one-time revenues are not involved in that number because in the end of the day you want to when you buy a business you want to pay 
for uh, you're assuming a, a specific profit that's going to be there after you buy the business as well right so everything that is not going to be there because it was happened was just one time you don't want to be for it to be involved in the number that you're working with now you might look at those things and you say hey whatever here adjustment small adjustment here small adjustment there but guys this is crucial because in the end of the day let's say we get to a point where we we pay for a business uh five times ebitda right on the multiples under ebitda those adjustments can easily be at around 100,000. It obviously depends on the size of the business, but if it's a big business, it can even be much higher numbers that you work with. Now, every small adjustment, let's say you have an adjustment, assuming that you make differences that are worth around $100,000, right? That's me. That means $500,000 that you can use to, to either take home for yourself or to keep in the business for working capital and to help to grow the business. So you really want to make sure that you're really paying attention to those adjustments. And remember, all those adjustments, in the end of the day, it's all up to negotiation, right? I mean, whenever someone, if, this, if, if you send an offer and the seller is telling you, hey, no, I don't want this, I don't want that, you can bring those type of things uh, from your angle from your position in saying hey look yeah you want this but what about this and that and all the adjustment that we need to make here uh, because i don't think this should be included in, in the ebitda and that's how you can negotiate uh, i guess part of the the acquisition cost you you have your your side of things you're saying hey look this is just a one-time fee or a one-time revenue so I don't think it should be involved in the EBITDA and he's going to tell you, hey, I think this and that. And that's how you can basically have a baseline or, or to start your negotiation from there. So, yeah, I, I hope you like this kind of video. Um, I hope it, it shows you how you can save a lot of money in your next acquisitions. Uh, subscribe, like the video, share with your friends, help me grow the channel and see in the description below. Fill the survey and let me know uh, what's the biggest thing you want to know about or what kind of video you want me to to, to help you with and fill your details um, and I'm going to make you a personalized video just for you and see the description below also if you didn't join yet join the, the Facebook free business buying mastermind so do it right now like subscribe comment do all that and I'll see you soon